Anti-Christian bigotry is probably at the highest it's been in the world since the Muslim conquest of Jerusalem that caused the Crusades, or possibly even since Rome's war against Jesus and his followers itself. As you know, the terrorist group called the Islamic State now runs a de facto country with millions of people under its domination, a country that's geographically as large as the United Kingdom. They don't just behead American citizens in snuff films uploaded to YouTube. Those are the fewest amongst their murders. They prefer to kill Christians by the thousand. They like the traditional Quranic approach, cutting off heads, even of children. It's a death fetish, a celebration of death. These Islamic State terrorists like to pose for photos holding up the severed heads of their victims. It's a macabre combination of medieval or even prehistoric barbarism and savagery with 21st century technology like cell phone cameras. Obviously, they'd kill any Jew they ever met, but there aren't a lot of Jews left in northern Iraq or Syria, so they have to make do with killing other Muslims they don't like or Christians. They really, really hate Christians. The Islamic State wants to conquer much of the world. Here's a simple map published by them that depicts their plans. Everything in the jihadi colors, the color black is what they want to conquer. There's a lot of Christians and other religions to kill in all that land, but the world doesn't care. I mean, Barack Obama has sent 3,000 soldiers to fight Ebola in Africa. Not sure how soldiers are going to fight a disease, but he won't lift a finger to help Christians being slaughtered by the Islamic State. Well, thank God we live in Canada, a free, democratic, pluralistic society that protects freedom of religion. I mean, it's right there in our Charter of Rights. Section 2, it's marked fundamental freedoms in our Constitution, and the very first freedom enunciated in our Constitution, ahead of freedom of speech, ahead of freedom of assembly and freedom of association, far ahead of any democratic rights like the right to vote, the most important freedom of all, here, let me read it to you. Everyone has the following fundamental freedoms. A. Freedom of conscience and religion. Same thing in Diefenbaker's Bill of Rights, passed in 1960. Freedom of religion came even before freedom of speech. Of course it's the most important freedom, because if we don't have the freedom to believe what we want to believe, to think what we want to think, well, what's the point of freedom of speech or freedom of assembly? In that way, freedom of religion, freedom of conscience, is a strategic freedom upon which other freedoms are built. That's one of the best things about Canada. Here's the crazy thing. Even though that's enshrined in our Bill of Rights and our Charter of Rights and our common law going back centuries, even though our Supreme Court regularly affirms this freedom, it is still under attack in Canada. And Christians are the victims of this discrimination. Now, thank God, obviously, not the victims of mass violence, like in the Islamic State, of course not. But there is a kind of mob mentality to the anti-Christian sentiment in Canada, too. We showed it to you in the city of Nanaimo, where this May, anyone with a strong Christian belief was banned from holding events in the city's conference center. I know that sounds crazy, and it was, but here are some clips from that city council debate in May that enacted the discriminatory motion. We don't want to be associated with organizations that promote homophobia or other expressions of hate. We will not accept acts of hate and and it's even within our charter of rights and freedoms as well that hate speech is not permitted what i would call a very strong unbelievable christian belief i find this almost to be a criminal point of view in this day and age just to be clear it was all about banning christians no one else no jews no muslims no hindus no sikhs just christians call a very strong unbelievable christian belief I find this almost to be a criminal point of view in this day and age. Seriously. Now, after Sun viewers joined that fight, the city of Nanaimo backed down, believe it or not. They apologized. They paid compensation to the Christian group. And they've generally melted into a puddle of shame since then. I understand that the mayor of Nanaimo himself will not even run again, and that's good. But my thesis today is that the Nanaimo anti-Christian bigotry isn't a one-off. It's not unique. It's part of a trend in Canada, a new fashion, a new conventional wisdom. Christians aren't polite company anymore. They can be bad-mouthed in a way you dare not comment on other religions. And words can lead to deeds, of course. So this unchecked anti-Christian bigotry has turned into action in other ways, too. Various left-wing left anti-Christian lawyers, for example, have tried to ban law students from the proposed law school at Trinity Western University from practicing law in various provinces. Trinity Western, as you know, it's a great university in BC. It's been operating for decades. It's 
setting up a law school now. It's accredited, just like any other law school, of course. They're going to teach law just like anywhere else does, but they do one thing differently. They ask their students to take a personal conduct oath. Clean living. No booze, no drugs, no casual sex. It's a Christian school. Now, you don't have to be Christian to attend there. You can be Jewish or Muslim or whatever. You can be gay, whatever. Plenty of gay Christians. It's just that in the terms of your own conduct, how you behave, you've got to be conservative, including no sex outside of a marriage of one man and one woman. Again, these are personal pledges that students take to govern their own lives, not to impose on other people. And look, if you don't believe in that stuff, why would you want to go to school there? This is completely legal, of course. It's protected by our Constitution. It's called freedom of religion and freedom of association. A dozen years ago, when the left-wing BC Teachers Union tried to ban teaching graduates from Trinity Western from becoming teachers in BC, claiming they'd all be homophobic bigots, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled eight to one that Trinity Western was perfectly allowed to be a Christian school. But like I say, anti-Christian bigotry in Canada is on the rise. And so anti-Christian bigots in law societies, the groups that run lawyers in different provinces, they've tried to ban prospective Trinity Western grads from practicing law in different Canadian provinces. Just ban them. Just make them Christian-free zones. Sharia law-loving Muslims, no problem. Turban-wearing Sikhs, welcome. Orthodox Jews, but of course, it's the law. But not Bible-believing Christians. Isn't that funny? Or merely anyone who believes in keeping... Uh, you know, keeping things in their pants. That's bigotry, apparently. But as you know, the Law Society of Upper Canada has voted already not to admit lawyers with a degree from Trinity Western. They've done it. So has the Law Society of Nova Scotia. It is clear they are banning people from working simply because they're Christians. What a bunch of bigots. Now, I think these law societies are going to get slapped down by our Supreme Court. We've already had a case on this a dozen years ago. But until this works its way through the courts, it's awfully embarrassing that lawyers who we expect to uphold the law are actually the ones violating the law and discriminating against Christians, isn't it? Now, New Brunswick's Law Society did the right thing. Earlier this year, they voted to accredit Trinity Western grads. Of course they did, because they're going to be law students and know the law. They're not bigots. But then a small rump of anti-Christian lawyers in New Brunswick got together and demanded a do-over. They lost the vote, but they're lawyers, see? So they love loopholes and appeals. So these sore losers lost the vote fair and square. So then they managed to schedule a re-vote on a weekend? On a Saturday where you had to go to the meeting and vote in person? So obviously most normal lawyers weren't there. They're normal. They're not political freaks on a weekend. But 137 anti-Christian activists in the province with bees in their bonnets did show up to vote no in private. They wouldn't even allow the Sun News Network to bring in a camera. No wonder they were ashamed of themselves. But our reporter Paige McPherson managed to get into the meeting. Here's what she reported after the meeting. In a controversial decision, members of the New Brunswick Law Society have voted against accrediting Trinity Western University's law school in the province of New Brunswick. The BC-based Christian University, said to open its law school in September 2016, openly requires its students to sign a covenant saying they won't partake in certain behavior, including sex outside of a marriage between a man and a woman. The vote happened right here in Fredericton on Saturday and saw 160 67 members of the Law Society vote for the motion to not accredit the university. That would be going against the Law Society's current position to allow grads to practice law here in New Brunswick. Only 30 voted against that motion. Members had the opportunity to speak with some saying the covenant at Trinity Western is offensive and discriminatory and others saying that it's an issue of religious freedom and that Trinity Western grads would have all of the skills necessary to practice law in the province. The vote is non-binding and will be going to the New Brunswick Law Society's Council to deliberate on September 26th. For Sun News Network, this is Paige McPherson reporting in Fredericton. That's Paige. Just to clarify, there were 167 votes. It went 137 against Trinity Western, 34 with Trinity Western. So in a small in-person meeting, 137 bigots in a whole province, store losers really, who already lost his vote earlier this year, but insisted on a weekend do-over where you had to attend in person, 
Those 137 voted to discriminate. Seriously, in 2014, we actually have votes to discriminate against religions in Canada? Maybe we ought to set up two different kinds of water fountains, too, like they did in the Deep South before integration. Down there, it was one water fountain for the whites, one water fountain for the blacks. Maybe we ought to do the same in law schools, eh? One water fountain for everyone except Christians. Well, in this case, there would be no water fountains at all for Christians. Seriously, these 137 lawyers want to ban Christian law students who sign this pledge from ever practicing law in the province without meeting these kids without a complaint filed against them, without a hearing about any behavior or conduct. It is the dictionary definition of prejudice and discrimination. Well, this weekend's sore loser vote that Paige reported on is not binding, as she mentioned, but on September 26th, the New Brunswick Law Society will meet to have yet another vote on the subject. What do you think they should do? Do you think they should listen to 137 sore losers and ban the Christian lawyers? Not Islamic State style, no, we're Canadian. We wouldn't decapitate anyone. We would do it more in Nanaimo style. I would call a very strong, unbelievable Christian belief. I find this almost to be a criminal point of view in this day and age. Yeah, do you think that should be the approach in New Brunswick when it comes to lawyers? Let me know what you think. And let me know if you want to help. All summer, I've been collecting names on a petition to fight back. So far, more than 16,000 people have signed a petition to fight against this anti-Christian bigotry. It is the largest petition the Law Society of New Brunswick has ever received in its history. Do you want to add your name to it? If so, visit my website, therealbigots.com. I'll send your name to the Law Society to tell them not to give in to the 137 sore losers who want to ban Christians. Hey. If you hate Christians so much, if you want to live in a Christian-free zone so badly, why don't you move to one? I hear it's all the rage in Iraq.